work breakdown structures in Microsoft Project 2013. I'm a firm believer that it's the project team that should create the list of tasks for the project. It shows commitment and involvement. This could be done on a whiteboard or on a flip chart or with yellow sticky notes with the project team discussing and communicating what they believe is involved in the project and how it should be ordered. In this example, I've actually got a project called Project X. This is the top level of the project. It's the level one. It's the project title. I've decided to break this project down into different work packages, concept, feasibility, design, development, manufacture. These are my level twos or the work packages, sometimes called work streams. In this example, I've then split the design work package down into three separate areas, design of the handset, design of the base unit, design of the keypad. These are my level three, I can call them activities. And at level four, I've got the bottom level tasks, the things that are verb nouns. In this example, I'm only showing them for the handset, where I've got to define the A surface, design the rear moulding, and design the internal fixtures. So once the project team have been involved in creating this, so they're showing commitment and motivation and involvement, it's a great team building exercise, it's a great place to observe team dynamics. This can be taken and put into Microsoft Project. So here in Microsoft Project 2013, I've switched uh, all my tasks to be automatically scheduled and I've typed in this task list. Now, as I was typing the task list, I put the work packages in capital letters. This is so I can find them later. It's rather easy for me to find them in this exercise, but in a real project, you can actually identify what you mean as a work package by the capital letters. I'm going to select everything underneath the project title and go to the task tab and use the indent icon to indent the tasks to become subtasks. This creates a hierarchy. This has pushed everything a little bit to the right and we can see that the project title has now become a summary task. And now the benefit of using those caps locks on the work packages. I can select everything underneath work package one. I can see it quite clearly and indent them a second time. The same for the tasks under work package two. And finally, the last three tasks under work package three. I'm going to indent these subtasks underneath that activity as well to show you four different levels in the project. Microsoft Project can actually have over 65,000 different levels. But as you can see, every time we indent them, it moves the text further to the right. We're actually limited to the number of characters we can put in here. So in practical terms, when we go beyond 35 of levels, you can't actually read the task names. So to control what we see in Microsoft Project, let's go to the View tab. On the View tab, we have this outline, and we can pull that down to say we only want to see the level one project tasks. Now, in this case, it's the title of the project. It's the only thing at level one. And this might be a very simple project plan to show the senior managers. They only get to see when does the project start and when does the project finish. The middle management might want to see level twos. This is telling them when the project starts and finishes, but when the work packages start and finish. Again, I can show level threes. And now I've got this fourth level at the bottom. I can show level four. That's actually going to be all subtasks in my case. Level four. So using this outlining, the indent and Outdent will outline your, your project. We can actually easily control nine levels using this drop down. A few more features. We can manually close the work packages or the sub activities if we wanted to. 
So if we were only working on work package one, we could actually only show the tasks in work package one. This means we can manage things on the screen. Say we had about 20 tasks underneath work package one, we'd see them all at once. And when we're working on work package two, we can close work package one, open work package two. Let me just show all tasks again. Another feature is to insert the work breakdown code. Now I'm going to right click in this heading area to insert a column. And the column I want is the WBS field. So I type W and it jumps to all those field names beginning with W. There's WBS. And there's my codes 1, 1.1, 1, 1.1.1. 1, 1. That's my three levels. I've got four levels. And previously, I had set up this to have a default prefix of test product. Let's have a look at how I did that. I would have gone to the project tab on the ribbon and clicked the WBS drop down to define the code. And there I've got it. It's called test project. And uh, I'm going to use numbers in an ordered sequence. 